Thank you for being here. Uh, today, we are doing an introduction. We will um, have an opportunity for you to enter questions into chat that will come to the host panel. Those questions will be addressed over the series and considered for the content as we move forward. Um, Today is just a brief overview and an introduction and to review the answers uh, to the survey. Ernie, would you like to kick us off? Yes. Welcome to the introduction of Vision for Equality Bust Housing Myth. Thank you for joining us. This is a peer-to-peer -peer initiative that will conduct workshops to educate audience to plan for housing, finance homes, find support, and identify service as needed. We are glad you are joining us to Bust Housing Myths, which is a project of Vision for Equality. Vision for Equality's goal from its founding until today is for people with disabilities to live safe and productive lives and to assure that they are given every opportunity to gain full citizenships in their home communities. Advocacy activities include educating public officials, support systems, and the general public on issues related to intellectual disabilities and autism and to promote and support changes in practices and policies that enhance the quality of people's lives. Housing myth busting is funded by the Pennsylvania Developmental Disability Council. This is a project that underscores the significance of self-determined choices for individuals with disabilities. As family members and individuals with intellectual and or developmental disabilities, including autism, we recognize that having a safe and stable place to call home is a crucial aspect of future planning. The next few slides, We'll share information about Vision for Equality's bust housing myths. Living where you choose and with whom you choose is a basic human right. Yet policies and practices are still in place that prevent people with intellectual, developmental, and physical disabilities from li living in their own home. Secure, safe, and stable housing is vital to helping all people thrive, no matter their circumstances. As family members and people with disabilities, we struggle with the challenges of what will happen when family is no longer able or available to support the individual. A safe and stable place of choice to call home is a crucial component of permanency planning for people with disabilities and their families. Too many people with intellectual and developmental disabilities never experience living in their own home because they and their families are not aware of the possibilities. We will be using information gathered from a survey we developed to build content for Vision for Quality Busts Housing Myths. This is part of a grant made possible by the Pennsylvania Developmental Disability Council. Our goal is to provide accurate information and viable housing options outside our residential settings while providing choice and control to individuals with intellectual disabilities and or autism and their families. We would like to introduce you to our content expert and consultant, David Gates. David has represented and worked with individuals with de developmental disabilities and their families and support groups in federal and state courts, administrative agencies, and Pennsylvania legislature since 1976. He was a member of Office of Developmental Programs, Information Sharing and Adver Adver 
Advisory Committee. He was project lead for the Pennsylvania Developmental Disabilities Council grant on housing transition, tenancy sustaining provider training, project lead on the Urban Housing Options Demonstration Project Grant, and is currently consulting with us on the Vision for Equality Bus Housing Myths Grants. He also provides waiver-funded housing transition and tenancy sustaining services through Terrapin House, a family-directed provider. He has participated in the development of seven licensed residential microboards, a home owned jointly by three waiver precip precipitants, an apartment house developed with subsidized units specifically with a preference for individuals with developmental disabilities and other family and self-advocate directed housing models. He has presented at 25 workshops on housing options throughout the state since 2010. My name is Ernest Roundtree. Uh, I call Ernie for short. I'm a co, um, co, co host of the, of this um, grant. And I'm also a self advocate with a disability living independently. Hi, my name is Gabo Smaglick. Uh, I work for a Vision for Equality, and I uh, live with my wife with the supports of family. Good evening, everyone. My name is Linda Morris. I am the grandparents advisor with Vision for Equality. I live in Luzerne County. I have 11 grandchildren, two of which have special needs, and I also have four great-grandchildren. I have been involved in the disability community for over 50 years. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina DiBiasso. I live in southeastern Pennsylvania. I'm the proud parent of three adults, and my middle son was born 25 years ago with Down syndrome, which led me into the world of disabilities. Good evening. My name is Joan Neri. I'm 37 years old, and I currently live in Eagle Rock in Luzerne County and live with my mom currently. Hi, my name is Carrie Freeman. I am a co-lead with Ernie Roundtree. I live in uh, South Central Pennsylvania. Before children, I worked in the foster care system, supporting uh, children with federal funding uh, that needed it. Um, and then now I am in the disability realm with two boys with uh, special needs. Both boys have autism and that's what brings my passion to this work is always looking ahead and uh, looking for what the next steps and the future holds. So welcome. Please identify who you are. So please use this QR code to do a mentee and are you a person with a disability, a family member? There's also a link in chat that Tina has put in for us. If the okay. QR code does not work, feel free to click on that. Thank you so much for being here.
We appreciate you participating. We are here today and we are inviting you to join us as we change the narrative from here are your choices to where do you want to call home? In, in the beginning, individuals with intellectual disabilities and or autism shared themes they found in housing. Individual with intellectual disabilities and or autism prioritized questions leading to a team developed survey. And with the help of many partners, a family survey was widely distributed throughout Pennsylvania in Spanish and in English. We are here today to bust some of the myths surrounding housing for intellectual disabilities and or autism, to share accurate information with the intent to encourage and empower families. For individuals to have choice and options that lead to safe, secure, and stable housing. Here is one of the videos that I created of the motivation, so take it away. Hi, my name is Ernest Roundtree. My friends call me Ernie for short. I am an individual with disabilities. I live on my own. I get help going grocery shopping. I get transportation to go places. I eat what I eat, cook whenever I cook, and also go wherever I go. I live successfully each and every day. If I can do it, you can too. That is so true. Um, I've been at this since 2016 on Halloween weekend, and I didn't let my disabilities excuse me for um, living independently. Hi. The following fast facts motivates our vision for equality team to bust house myths, housing myths and empower others with accurate information. Hi, 80% of individuals receiving intellectual disability, developmental disability, and or autism services are supported in different degrees by their family. Fact. Secure, safe, and stable housing is vital to helping all people thrive no matter what their circumstances. Fact, a safe and stable place of choice to call home is a crucial component of long-term planning for people with disabilities and their families. Fact. Too few people with intellectual and developmental disabilities experience living in their own home because of various reasons. Housing Miss Busting Survey. The Housing Myth Busting Survey was developed by a team at Vision for e uh, Equality along with David Gates in 2023. 
and distributed across Pennsylvania by email and social media. We had 318 completed surveys from across the Commonwealth in both English and Spanish. These were completed by self-advocates and families, waiver participants and those on the waiting list for waiver. We will be using the information gathered from this survey to build content for our program. Housing myth busting is a peer-to-peer -peer initiative. This means that families and self-advocates are working together to educate, support, and empower other families and self-advocates. The survey question uh, that was asked on the house myth busting was, have you considered yourself or your loved one living in their own home? We received over 300 responses. 31% responded they are or their family have not considered an individual with intellectual and or developmental disabilities and or autism living in their own home. 69% responded they or their family have or are considering an individual with intellectual and or developmental disabilities and or autism living in their own home. The housing myth busting survey asked, to your knowledge, can a person on a waiver own or rent their own home or apartment? There were 318 responses. 30% responded that an individual on an Office of Developmental Programs Intellectual Developmental Disability Waiver cannot own or rent their own home or apartment, while 70% responded an individual on an Office of Developmental Programs Intellectual Developmental Disabilities Waiver can own or rent their own home or apartment. Can a person on a waiver own or rent their own apartment? The correct answer is yes. An individual on an Office of Developmental Programs Intellectual Developmental Disability Waiver can own or rent their own apartment. The housing myth busting uh, survey asks, to your knowledge, does the Office of Developmental Program Intellectual Developmental Disability Waiver offer a service to assist an individual in finding housing? We received over 300 responses. 48% responded they or their family do not know about a service available to assist an individual with intellectual and or developmental disabilities and or autism on waiver to finding housing. And 52% have responded they or their family are aware of a service on a waiver to find housing. Let me speak up here since Linda seems to be on, on mute. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> right, the, go ahead. Another, another question was, does the ODP Office of uh, Developmental Program or the um, 
uh, intellectual developmental disabilities waiver offer a service to assist an individual in finding housing? The correct answer is yes. The Office of Developmental Program Intellectual Developmental Disability Waiver does offer a service to assist an individual in finding housing. Let me point out that that service is called the Housing Transition Tenancy Sustaining Service, and we will be describing that in much more detail what it covers, what service is provided, and how to access this service in future webinars. To your knowledge, does owning a home impact your waiver benefits? The Housing Myth Busting Survey asks, does to your knowledge, does owning a home impact your waiver benefits? Or we received 318 responses. This was an even split on responses. 50% responded, owning a home does impact your Office of Developmental Program waiver. 50% responded, owning a home does not impact your Office of Developmental Program waiver. Does owning a home impact your waiver benefits? Correct answer, no. Owning a home does not impact your Office of Developmental Programs waiver. The home must be the individual's primary residence as in where the individual lives. David Gates will be expanding on this throughout Vision for Quality Busts Housing Myths series of workshops. So to your knowledge, can a goal to live in your own home be part of your individual support plan? What do you think, Gabe? Sorry. The housing map busing survey asks, to your knowledge, can a goal to live in your own home or apartment be a part of the individual support plan? In this question, own home or apartment does not refer to group homes or life sharing, we received range, a range of responses. 15% responded there cannot, cannot be a goal to live in your own home and your individual support plan. 77 responded yes, there can be a goal to live in your own in a home of your own in the individual support plan. 7% responded, a goal to live in my own home is already part of my individual support plan. The Housing Myth Busting Survey asked, can a goal to live in your own home be part of the individual support plan? And the correct answer, is yes, you can have a goal to live in your own home as part of your individual support plan. Our team will be expanding on this throughout Vision for Equality Bust Housing Myths series of workshops. The Health Myth Busting Survey asks, would you or your loved one want to have a roommate? Does anyone else find this split surprising? 42% responded they do not want a roommate. And then 58% responded they do not want it. They do want a roommate. The Housing Myth Busting Survey asked, to your knowledge, if you have a waiver, can you have a roommate that also has a waiver? We have received 318 responses. 
23% responded if they have an Office of Development Programs Intellectual Developmental Disabilities Waiver, they cannot have a roommate with an Office of Development Programs with Intellectual Developmental Disabilities Programs Waiver. 77% responded if they have an Office of Development Programs Intellectual Developmental Disabilities Waiver, they can have a roommate with an Office of Developmental Programs Intellectual Developmental Disabilities Waiver. The housing myth busting survey asked, if you have a waiver, can you have a roommate that also has a waiver? The correct answer is yes. You can live with whoever you choose, regardless of if they have a waiver or not. Where it can get complicated is the delivery of services of multiple waivers across individual needs and multiple waiver systems. Our team will be expanding on this throughout the housing myth busting uh, service of workshops. Housing met busting survey asks, are you afraid of living in on your own or of your loved one living on their own? There were 318 responses. 24% responded they are not afraid to live on their own, while 76% responded they are afraid of living on their own. As a team, we all discussed living on our own. Each of us were nervous and had concerns bubble up as we look to live on our own. Throughout Vision for Equality busing housing mess, I and other self-advocates and families will share our stories of how we address our fears and concerns. Back one slide, please. What are your concerns for yourself living in your own home? What are your concerns for your loved one living in his or her own home? So in the chat, is another Mentimeter question, or you can scan the slide here. Using one to three words, what is your first concern when considering living on your own? So everyone take a minute and answer the question just with one or two words. Feel free to repeat any of the words that you're seeing on the screen. I see some good answers on that. These are surely things lots of people are feeling safety, support, finances, right? Probably. Mm -hmm. So Tina, you and I have, have felt like that, right? Absolutely. As a parent, right? I think yep. my first response would be safety. Yep. Absolutely. But we can address most of these things with some good planning and problem solving. Anybody else? I think there's so many people that are all thinking the same thing here. Thanks.
thanks everyone for your really great responses. No surprises, just like there weren't any with the uh, survey, I think, right? Absolutely. We're going to go over that in the next slide. Wow, this is our this is our final. Okay, hey, I'm going to scroll in on this to make it bigger. Are you able to see that any better? So safety was a really big answer. Transportation, another great thing well, to think oh, about. Oh, neighbor judgment. Wow, that's something to think about. All right, thank you so much for having this in here. And we really are going to get an opportunity to address so many of these as we continue through our series. So the survey question was, what are your concerns for, for you or your loved one about living in your own home or apartment. Everyone was given the, the opportunity to fill out the same Mentimeter. And these are the responses that we received from the over 300 survey results. A lot of the same responses, absolutely. Yep. Totally. Routines. I like that. I hadn't thought about that. How important routines are in everyone's life. So Daily to, living. That is another one that um, just planning it. Medication is so important too. So do any of these answers surprise you from the survey results? versus our results from tonight. It didn't surprise yeah. me. These are pretty consistent with the themes that we just saw everybody answering mm -hmm. as well. I, yeah, I agree. I think one we have to remember from the, the last screen that we just did was somebody wrote um, loneliness. And that's, uh, we forget about that, but that's, that's huge. And isolation. Yeah. Isolation. Yeah. Here is another of the videos that was created. Go ahead. The more you learn about living independently, the more successful you will be on um, living on your own and have a wonderful life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I can vouch that, you know, I am still learning each and every day. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I've lived independently since Halloween weekend of 2016, and I am still learning each and every day. So am I, Ernie. So am I. Please continue to join us as we provide accurate information showing people with disabilities and their families there are viable options which provide choice and control outside of residential settings. We plan to cover one of three, uh, how to look for housing that meets your health and safety needs. That second one, what do you want slash need in your own home? What type of support do you need to be successful your 
in your own home. The, the diverse housing options across Pennsylvania, building and maintaining positive relationships, exploring assistive technology and remote supports. We will also cover possible ways to pay for housing. Having a brief uh, explanation of financial health and where to find your rights and responsibilities as a tenant or homeowner. In our upcoming workshops, we will cover some of the barriers and concerns surrounding living on your own with suggestions for how to address them. Demonstrate how charting the life course can help us plan and problem solve. Vision for Quality Busts Housing Myths. Our next presentation will be on choice and control in decision making. The date is Thursday evening, September 19th, beginning at 7 p.m. and ending at 8.30. You may use this URL code to register, register or use the link attached. This work is a project of Vision for Quality made possible through a grant from the Pennsylvania Developmental Disabilities Council. This is extremely important for our work to continue, is filling out the Pennsylvania Developmental Disability Council Satisfaction Survey. There's a link in chat, as well as here's the QR code. We would really appreciate uh, having your feedback as we kicked off our introduction tonight, and we look forward to bringing you more information. And it is in chat in two different ways in case the one way works better for you than the other way, but you don't need to answer the survey twice. Good point. We Kim. appreciate all of you being here and taking your time to complete that. So Vision for Equality has um, multiple grants through the Pennsylvania Developmental Disability Counter Council. Uh, leading the way is another grant uh, that we do have um, that is for um, a focus group that's going to be leadership by individuals with disabilities. Um, this is an opportunity for an in-person event for self-advocates, families, and allies to come and share their thoughts and ideas around community membership. This is a discussion that will take place around the barriers and solutions with an emphasis on next steps, including local leadership. The event is open to those age 16 and older. There is a $40 travel stipend, one per household with restrictions um, possibly applying. Uh, refreshments will be provided. Um, this is hosted by SAFE, supporting autism and families everywhere. This is for the Northeast location. We also have another one that's going to be in the central area. This is going to be in the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania area. It is the um, same, the same type of focus group. It's an in-person event for self-advocates, families, and allies to share their thoughts and ideas around community membership and this will be in central Pennsylvania. And we are very thankful to the Pennsylvania Developmental Disabilities Council 
for um, allowing Vision to continue projects uh, like this. All right, and in chat, I'm being asked if I can go back to the link for the sign up for our next one. That is here. It's also in chat if you scroll up just a little and look for uh, from Tina, were you able to put that in? Uh, that one, the sign up for choice and control and decision making. Yes. Okay, give me a minute here. Tina's going to put that in chat again to everyone. You can I, always find these I events too on here Vision comes, for Equality's website. Here comes everyone in the chat. There you go. Thank you, Tina. You can mm -hmm. always go to visionforequality.org and you will find all of our events there. Um, I want to, as a, as a parent, I just want to make a quick comment and Tina piggyback if you if you want to, but you know, the topics that are coming up are really gonna be informative. Um, a lot of this content that uh, that is following, we've really thought a lot about, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a mom and Tina's a mom of, you know, adults who we, we have to start looking at these things and we know the options are limited. Um, and we know this is a huge barrier for, uh, for us in our future planning. So we really are gonna cover some interesting information and hopefully look at some out of the box ideas and options with, with David Gates. Um, the, the difficulty here is not lost on us because uh, we're, we're living through the exact same situations right now, so. Vision for Equality Bus Housing Mix. Phone number 215-923-3349 or email us at grants at visionforequality.org or visit us, visit our website, www.visionforequality.org. And Vision for Equality also has a Facebook too. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks. You're welcome. Go ahead, Carrie. Sorry. No, you're good. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Um, in chat, I did see several questions come through. Um, I'm sorry that we didn't have a chance to answer the questions live in chat. They will be helping inform the workshops that we do have coming up. Um, we'll be looking over those um, and they will be helping to inform what we do present in the future. Um, Gabe just read off our email address. So you can reach us at grants at visionforequality.org. And Carrie, and did we send out our a copy of the slides for tonight's presentation for people that registered? No, I was going to do that with uh, the survey for anybody that um, that missed because the presentation was going over the survey answers. So we were uh, wanted to do that live. Thank you, Tina. We that concludes our presentation for this evening. Thank you for joining us. Yes. And we look you. forward of seeing you in the next in presentation September. in September. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you.